Welcome, Hudson Valley. This is Connor Walsh, host of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. This week on In Touch, we speak with Kathy McCarthy, Susan Downing, and Jody Hamill, all in regard to Go Red for Women's 20th anniversary luncheon happening Thursday, November 14th in Poughkeepsie. Kathy shares a number of stats from the American Heart Association and tips for prevention on stroke, heart disease, heart attack, and more. Susan goes into depth on what to expect from the event, along with why heart disease in women seems to be such a silent killer. Lastly, Jody, a stroke survivor, tells her story and how she bounced back after such a scary and life-altering incident. We invite you to listen to a previously recorded conversation between Kathy, Jody, Susan, and myself here on In Touch. I'm so proud to announce that In Touch has received another two excellence in broadcasting awards from the New York State Broadcasting Association for 2024. In Touch received the award for Outstanding Public Affairs Program or Series for the second year in a row. Not just that, but In Touch also received the award for Outstanding Editorial slash Commentary. This recognition would not be possible without all of our phenomenal guests that we learn from and grow with every single week. And of course, you the listener. Whether you've been listening for a while or you just found us, thank you for taking part in the conversation and staying in touch with what's going on in the Hudson Valley. Because of the awesome success of In Touch over the last year, we are expanding. We're launching a new spin-off series under the In Touch umbrella called Town Square Spotlight. These spotlights focus on amazing celebrities and leaders passing through the Hudson Valley who are making an impact in pop culture. You can check out our latest spotlights wherever you listen to In Touch. Hello, Hudson Valley. You're listening to another episode of In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. We got a great episode for you guys today and with a great organization celebrating 100 years. We have members of the American Heart Association. We're celebrating Go Red for Women. They're having a luncheon here in the Hudson Valley in Poughkeepsie, not too far away from the radio station, coming up Later in November, two days after my birthday, mind you, so it's such a good, great time of year. Great time of year. One of my favorites, I have to say. I'm not biased at all. But with us to talk about everything, uh, we have a bit of a hybrid episode. By phone, we have Susan Browning, chair of the 2024 Hudson Valley Go Red for Women Luncheon and president of Vassar Brothers Medical Center and Western Regional President of New Vance Health. With us in person, returning guest, we have Kathy McCarthy, Senior Director Director of Marketing Communications with the New York State American Heart Association. Good to have you around. Ooh, that's a big title. It isn't is a it? big title. <laughs> and also joining us for the very first time, and if I got this correct, very first radio interview altogether. So congratulations on that. Jody Hamill, you're going to be one of the speakers at the Go Red for Women luncheon. Really excited to hear about your story. Welcome to everybody. How are you guys? Thanks. Good. Thank you. Beautiful day. <laughs> it, it is a beautiful day here in the Hudson Valley. So, Kathy, I want to start off with you. For those who are uninitiated with the uh, American Heart Association, a lot of people probably have heard of them. Right. But probably don't know the nitty gritty of what you guys do exactly and how you guys are helping and serving people on a daily basis. Would you mind going into the role of the American Heart Association, and also talk about that 100 years. Congratulations yeah, to that. that amazing 100 years. Yeah. It's so exciting, and that makes us one of the oldest nonprofits. I mean, when you start to think about area organizations, who's 100 years old? It's great. I can't think of many. Yeah, I mean, 1924, so it was a long time ago, and we were founded by a group of cardiologists who were noticing that heart disease was on the rise and they didn't really know why. So they came together and said, we need to figure this out. Why is it happening? And what can we do? And in a lot of ways, that's still what we do. Although, of course, over 100 years, we have learned a lot about the why. And that's what, when people donate to us, when they come to one of our events, you're funding the research that will help people. And if you pause and think for a minute, you know somebody who has had heart disease or a stroke. And it touches everyone everywhere. And the more we learn, the more that we can do, the more we can invest in science. I think 
one of the things about cardiovascular diseases, and most people are familiar with the heart attack, mainly just from watching stuff on TV. People will see, like, grabbing the chest, grabbing the arm, and somebody's rushed to the hospital, and it's at a very, very special episode when that happens. Yeah. But it's more than just that. Do you mind breaking down a little bit of that stigma I for would us? I'd love to. Any kind of education is exactly what I love to talk about. So you described the classic Hollywood heart attack. Oh my God, the chest pain collapse. Um, but for a lot of people, and Jody, I'll bet same for you. You just weren't looking for this to happen. You never knew. So um, there is, of course, that crushing pain in the center of your chest. There can be pain in your left arm. Those are the main symptoms that people know about. And then for women, heart disease gets kind of sneaky. Like women might have shoulder pain. They might be sick to their stomachs um, or other gastrointestinal distress. And then a really big one with women is fatigue. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you ask any woman, are you tired? And the answer is, <laughs> I've been tired for 20 <laughs> years. Right. But the thing to do is know your body yeah. and, and it, it will be something different and it will go beyond it. Don't brush it off. Get it checked out. And especially at the Heart Association, we've been really big on blood pressure. That often has no symptoms. So make sure when you have your checkups, you get your blood pressure checked. If you're at the supermarket or the drugstore and you see a cuff, use it see how you're doing. Absolutely. Definitely worth uh, going into to try to make sure that you're on the right path. Exactly. It's one of those things. That it's, it does kind of sneak up on you in this way. And uh, it, it definitely is something that a lot of people need to look into. And I'm glad that the American Heart Association is around to be able to help out with this. Now, we also have Susan with us on the phone. Don't want to make it seem like we're not paying attention to you. Even though you're on the phone, we can't see you, but you're here with us in our hearts and also uh, in our monitors uh, as well. You were telling me before that we got onto the mic, you're out in California right now, San Diego of all places. So thank you for being here considering uh, your travels and everything. Thank you so much. It, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, the American Heart Association reached out and asked me if I could possibly accommodate uh, this time. I was just more than happy to do so because it's such an important message. Absolutely. I agree. And it's such a great event. Now, normal circumstances, you are here in the Hudson Valley, of course, uh, you know, have a big role, of course, president of Vassar Brothers Medical Center and Western Regional President of New Vance Health. Definitely big roles that you have here in the community. And not just that, you are the chair of the event that we are talking about today, Go Red for Women Luncheon, that's happening November 14th at the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel in Poughkeepsie. Do you think you could tell us a little bit about the event and what people can expect out of it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just as you said, Thursday, November 14th over at the Double Tree, it starts at 1030. It'll run for just about three hours, ending at about 130. And there's a silent auction and some networking time. Uh, and uh, we'll have a healthy lunch, a program beginning at about noon. A stroke survivor, Jody Hamill, who will be uh, speaking in just a little bit, will uh, be with us. She will be sharing her story at the luncheon. And we've also, uh, for one of the first times, we've uh, uh, assembled a panel discussion, uh, which is really going to be exciting. Uh, it's four female physicians from New Vance Health uh, who will oh, wow. talk about how women can live their, their best lives. We will have a female cardiologist, a female OBGYN, a female hospitalist who's an internist, and a female emergency medicine specialist. Uh, and it's really exciting for us because this, this is the 20th anniversary of Go Red for Women, uh, which brings together uh, women to fight their number one cause of death, uh, which is not, not known by a lot of people. But the number one cause of death for women uh, is heart disease. Yeah, that so surprised me. So we've been raising me. awareness and... and funding research about women. Yeah, no, honestly, that really surprised me. I remember the first time that I had Kathy on when she was going through all the facts and figures with me. I was very surprised that, you know, it was heart disease. And I think one of the reasons why it's such a surprise to me and a surprise to a lot of people is that it seems to affect men and women very differently. And it seems that it affects women kind of, quote unquote, silently. Do you mind going into that a mm -hmm. little bit and kind of like breaking down why it is, quote unquote, a more silent disease for women? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what a woman will likely experience um, is she'll experience some nausea. She might have some back pain, some gastrointestinal distress, fatigue. And these are not uncommon, right? I for mean, just these about are not anything. uncommon symptoms or, or 
feelings for either men or for women. Uh, so what a woman gen generally does not feel is that sudden pain to the chest. Um, that can happen, of course, but that is that classical uh, person gripping their chest, falling to the ground, you know, having a heart attack or not being able to breathe. And yet a woman's symptoms are so different uh, that very often even, even a clinical provider can look at a woman and not realize until they take lab tests and do diagnostics that, that a woman is having um, a cardiac arrest. Mm, geez, that really is kind of scary to be able to, well, not to be able to recognize that right away. It's definitely a lot more silent. As you said, nausea, back pain, gastrointestinal distress, fatigue. Those are things that you could just have from a, having the wrong meal. I have a statistic here, and I'm curious what you think of it. Nearly 45% of women over the age of 20 live with some form of cardiovascular disease. That's kind of concerning. Yes. No, that is very much concern, concerning. And the fact that a lot of people, again, don't realize that means that they're not taking care of that. Um, they're not uh, incorporating those lifestyle changes and getting the education um, that could really help improve uh, outcomes or perhaps even improve the way in which they live with the cardiovascular di disease, such as eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly. Um, it is recommended 150 minutes per week. Knowing your numbers, what is your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your uh, body mass index or BMI, uh, and of course knowing CPR. Yeah. Uh, so that you know, because we know that women, uh, because because of those symptoms, are so different than a man. Uh, very often, a woman is less likely to receive CPI from uh, uh, for for these symptoms uh, than a man might, uh, and so the you know the survival rate again is can be lower for a woman than for a man. Uh, so we want to not only educate the population but uh, also teach them about CPR so that they can help if they see uh, a woman next to them having these symptoms. Absolutely. So I've been CPR certified for a number of years. I've been recertifying myself. I've worked at uh, summer camps for years and years now, over 10 years. And it's been really accessible to me through my job. They're just like, hey, it's time for you to renew. We're going to have a class with everybody that's all together part of the camp. So it was real easy for me. But for those who may not receive that kind of training through their job or just have the outright accessibility to it where somebody says, hey, it's time to renew, where should people be going to learn CPR and to become CPR certified these days? Um, they can uh, access the resource through the American Heart Association at www.heart.org. Amazing. And then, of course, also speaking about uh, www.heart.org, where should people learn more about Go Red for Women and to uh, register and find out more about this luncheon? Great question. Uh, that same website, uh, <laughs> www.heart.org backslash Go Red HV. Go Red HV for Hudson Valley. Terrific. So before I pass it on over to uh, Kathy and Jody for a moment, I want to talk to you about the 20th anniversary of Go Red for Women. Obviously, 20 years. That is so impressive. And that just goes to show how important one this is, but then also the legacy that this has built up and the way that people are trying to combat cardiovascular diseases and try to raise the awareness for it. Can you tell us about the uh, the legacy of the 20th anniversary and why it means so much, not just to the Hudson Valley, but to medical facilities nationwide and to the American Heart Association? Yeah, so it's the 20th anniversary, of course, of Go Red for Women, uh, layered on top one of 100 years for the American Heart Association. Yes which has really promoted um, the advancement of equitable research and care, advocating for inclusive health policies, and always raising awareness. You know, the fact that here we are celebrating two very big and important anniversaries, 100 years for the American Heart Association and 20 years here for Go Red for Women, I think it just goes to show you is like this is something, unfortunately, it is a burden, it is a weight that we have to carry. But as somebody, as you were telling me, before we got onto the mic officially, you know, as somebody who's in the trenches with everybody working at the hospital, you see things firsthand and you see how it affects everybody. So I'm sure it's like something like this feels very personal at the same time for you as well. Am I right? You are absolutely right. It feels very personal. Uh, Jody is going to tell that story. I have uh, colleagues who personally have 
uh, similar stories to Jody. So it really is. It's about that awareness. It's about asking for help. Uh, and it is about taking care of, of all of us, of ourselves, for, uh, for both us as well as for our families and those we love. No, absolutely. Honestly, I think that's a perfect transition now to talk about you know some of the real stories we have with us. Uh, Jody Hamill, of course. Jody, you've been very patient over there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you're going to be one of the speakers at the Go Red for Women luncheon. That first of all, that's an honor, of course, I'm sure. But it's also probably bittersweet in a way because this is something that you had to live through and you had to go through, and it was a challenge for you. Obviously, you're going to be talking about it more there at the luncheon, but would you like to share as much of your story as you would like to with our Hudson Valley listening audience right now? Sure, absolutely. So on October 3rd of 2023, I was sitting at my desk at work. All of a sudden, my left side got very weak, got very lethargic, and next thing I know, I remember feeling like I needed to lay down and According to my colleague, I fell on the floor and she found me and I was seizing. Oh, wow. Um, so they called the ambulance, 911, and the ambulance came. And I remember nothing of that. I remember nothing for five days. I don't remember the stroke happening other than feeling the being lethargic and then, of course, the weakness on my left side. And then I woke up in the ICU, the neuro ICU, and... After a few minutes, my daughter said that I said, I I can't stay here. I have to go to work. And everyone was quite surprised that I was even talking and sitting up. I spent a few more days in the neuro ICU, and then they did move me to a regular floor. According to all the doctors, I was a miracle. Um, I was sitting up. I was talking. I was able to use my limbs. I was able to see. My my eyesight was double vision for a little bit. But other than that, I was functioning quite well. Wow. Wow. I, I got to say, based on the few experiences that I'm aware of, you did really luck out in that case. That's incredible. Yes, I did. But also five days of just like no recollection, totally lost there. What was that like to wake up to? You know, it. I didn't really think about it initially. I think as the year has gone by, I've spent more time reflecting. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I really truly was a miracle. That, you know, what the doctors did and my higher power had a different plan for me. Just kind of stopped me in my tracks and said, slow down. Um, you know, I, I'm a woman of 55 years of age and I worked full time. I raised two children on my own and I um, needed to slow down. And I think that it was my higher powers way of saying enough is enough. And the wonderful doctors and the ambulance, the EMTs, um, the ER, the neurosurgeon, the neurology department, they were wonderful, all of them, you know, without their loving support and kindness and their abilities, I might not have made it. Wow. I also think Jody needed to be here to share her story. And all of us who work at the American Heart Association and American Stroke Association, we're so honored, Jody, that you have chosen to tell this story. And I am sure one of your listeners or somebody that day will hear this and say, wow, I need to get checked out. She was living a really normal life, really healthy. And that happened. And, yes. And, and it, I think that's part of it. And, and that was the surprising part of it for me. I felt very healthy. I didn't feel this, this coming on at all, just mm. sudden. And um, my blood pressure was good. So it just goes to say you just never know. Wow. No, that really is kind of crazy the way that it hits you like that. And I, one thing when you first started telling the story, 2023, this was last year. I was very kind of taken back to hear that. It was like, oh, my God, this was only last year. That's, yes. yeah, I don't know why that's kind of shaken me a little bit, but it, it did. And I think that also just goes to show you, like, God bless you for the fact that you're doing so well now. It's like I would have thought this would have happened a while ago. After this, as you said, in the years since, this has been a big time of reflection for you. What have you learned from this experience that you have to do to – look out for yourself and now as you're doing this advocacy and telling your stories looking out for others i think for the most part i realized that i really need to stay on top of my health mm -hmm. you know i feel like i was living a fairly healthy lifestyle i did quit smoking after the stroke mm -hmm. um that was a, a very 
trying experience, yet a very, um, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that I was strong enough to put down those cigarettes and really look forward to living a long and healthy life. Um, I would definitely, I do now, make sure that I follow up at doctor's appointments. I had been very much lax in that area, um, but I think that as long as I continue to follow up with doctors, eat a healthy, balanced diet, stay away from those cigarettes, <laughs> then I, I should be good to go. I, I came a long way in a year, and I hope that um, you know I live a long, healthy life. Absolutely. I hope you do as well. So I think there's I think there's something beautiful from, from from your story and I think there's a lot of hope for a lot of other people out there who might be worried about things as well. So thank you very much for sharing your story. Um, one last thing before I hand it back over to Kathy. I do have more questions for you, Kathy. Sure you do. But um, in telling your story, obviously you're telling it on the radio now, which we really appreciate. You have the luncheon coming up. Have you been speaking about this in other places, or is this the first time that you're really telling the story in a more public audience? Um, this will be the first time that I'm telling the story in a public audience. Um, I have discussed it with doctors and yeah. obviously with Kathy and some other people through New Vance. Um, there was an article that was posted in regards to my stroke. I had told my story to um, a person at New Vance. They were wonderful with that article. And um, But this is definitely the first time that I'll be sharing my story. Wow. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's pretty impressive. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing it with us here. And I think, as Kathy said, I think there's somebody that's going to be listening to this and be like, you know, I, I should really check in on myself or, wow, I'm so proud of her or I'm so, it, that's such an inspiration. So, you know, it can happen at any time. So I'm glad you're here. Thank I'm you for sharing. i to be here. Thank you. Honestly, you, I love your outfit, first of all. It's very bright. <laughs> right? I was going to say, you have a very, I was going to say, very sunshiny energy, but then the outfit just goes perfectly with well, it. thank you. So thank you so, so much. Kathy, I want to pass it back over to you. Obviously, we've been talking about the Go Red for Women luncheon, and that's so, so big. We definitely want to get into that. But you guys also have something coming up right before then, actually. Something's going to be happening uh, in Kingston in the community uh, conversation at Point of Praise on October 27th. So that's leading into uh, Go Red for Women. So do you mind get, going into that a little bit and what people can expect in Kingston? Sure, that will be. There will be a panel discussion about ways to take care of your health. Um, there'll be a cardiologist and a nutritionist. And at that, we're going to do some CPR demonstrations. Perfect. Yep. Just We great. were just talking about that. I love that. We need yeah. that. We definitely need that. And, you know, we so many of us watched when DeMar Hamlin collapsed on the yes. football field. And it reminded us at the American Heart Association how important CPR is. You know, we fund all that science, and CPR is one of the things that came out of it. And we update the guidelines every five years. And probably about 10 or 15 years ago, we came up with hands-only CPR. So if someone collapses in front of you, put your two hands together and push hard and fast in the center of their chest. And we are trying to teach that to as many people as we can to build a nation of lifesavers. So if you're at Point of Praise on the 27th, I think we're there from noon till about 1.30. That's a skill that you can learn there. And that's two days before World Stroke Day, Miss Jody. Jody. So oh, wow. I'm thinking of you again, Well, too. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. See, I didn't know that about uh, World Stroke Day. That's I great. I was, I was saving that. That's a I'm glad that I'm glad that you saved that. No, <laughs> that's very know, good. At, at point of praise, we'll also have someone doing blood pressure screenings, um, and those are key too. I mentioned before how that's the silent killer. So again, come get your blood pressure checked. No, absolutely. I think that is so big. You definitely want to get everything checked. I, that's the main thing that I think that we get out of a lot of these more health related episodes of In Touch. It's like. Check in with your doctor. Please. So many people are scared to go because they're scared to know what might be wrong. I know. I, I understand that. I always go, you know, I go for my annual checkup and I'm like, shoot, I forgot to lose that 20 pounds again, <laughs> you know, or, oh, I still have my sugar love, but your doctor is there to help. So don't worry. And if, if they're a little judgy, we'll all get over it. But they really want to help you and give you the tools. You know, I think 
Jody, you know, right? Like quitting, you had to do that on your own. But there are tools and the doctor can help you and the, the same with weight loss. But just knowing all those numbers, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your BMI, your blood sugar level, all of that will sh- just give you a picture of your health and then you know how to proceed. Absolutely. Again, you're listening to In Touch, Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley's award-winning public affairs and issues program. We're speaking with Susan Browning with Vassar Brothers Medical Center, along with Kathy McCarthy of the American Heart Association of New York State. And we have Jody Hamill, who's going to be speaking at the Go Red for Women luncheon. Of course, that luncheon is going to be happening Thursday, November 14th at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel in Poughkeepsie. It's going to be a really great month ahead as they're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Go Red for Women and 100 years of the American Heart Association. So, of course, Susan already talked a little bit about where to go to go to heart.org backslash Go Red HV. But, uh, Kathy, do you have anything that you want to add to that where people can learn more about uh, attending the luncheon or helping uh, with any donations or just being involved with Go Red for Women? That website is the best one to go to, heart.org backslash go red HV. It'll give you a little bit of an outline. It'll show you what's happening. There's a donate now button if you're unable to attend but would like to donate, then you can do that too. Um, Yeah, that's the best place to go. Perfect. Absolutely. Now, as we're wrapping up, uh, do either one of you uh, have any last little nuggets for those listening here in the Hudson Valley? Uh, Anybody who'd like to start, a little nugget they want to share? I think that at this point, I'm good. Please come out and listen to my story at the luncheon. And I look forward to continuing to live the healthiest life that I can. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course, Jody. Kathy? I think I'd like to toss in the warning signs of stroke since Jody's Big time. here. Yes, please. And it's really easy to remember. There's the acronym FAST. Face drooping, arm weakness, slurred speech, time to call 911. Mm, that is big. Remember, FAST. We'll include that acronym in the description of this episode so you have that all together, along with all the links for uh, the American Heart Association and Go Red for Women. Anything else you want to add in on strokes there? or I think that's kind of it. You know, If you have any of those <laughs> symptoms, please pay attention. Talk to your family. What's the history? Terrific. Talk to your doctor. Yep. Talk to your doctor. And, of course, make sure that you celebrate Go Red for Women. That's going to be happening this November. Really happy to have everybody on. Thank you very much for your time. I know we've been going back and forth, who's talking where and hybrid and everything, but I appreciate everybody's time. This has been great, and I know this is going to save lives here in the Hudson Valley. Thank you. Thank you. This has been this week's edition of In Touch, the award-winning public affairs and issues program that runs across Town Square Media, the Hudson Valley radio stations. We want to give a big thank you to Kathy, Susan, and Jody. For more info on Go Red for Women, visit www.heart.org backslash Go Red HV. Of course, all links and information can be found in the description of this episode. I've been your host, Connor Walsh. Until next time, stay curious, keep an open mind, and as always, I'm glad we get to spend some time 